My name is Catherine Turner. My husband is a fisherman based in Castletown Bear in West Cork. I am from North Donegal and Damien is from Cork City. Neither of us are from fishing families, but through visits to Bear Island with family friends as a young fella, Damien slowly but surely grew to love the sea and pursued a life as a fisherman. After training in Greencastle Fishery School, where we met, and at the tender age of only 21, he bought shares in a fishing vessel and was soon in the role of skipper. He loves the sea and it's ingrained in him. He lives and breathes it every day. The industry does have its problems. You know, there's no doubt about it, you know. But I don't know what a job. It's, I started when I was 18, you know, and I love the job. You know, I progressed onto buying boats and I'm usually proud of the fact that a lot of the lads that work with me are in the local community. As a newly married couple, I moved to Castletown Bear in 1997, moving away from everyone I knew and the life I knew. It wasn't an easy transition. It was a lonely time in my life. It took time to get to know people, and although Damien's parents had moved from the city to Castletown Bear, I found it very hard to find my place in the community. Damien was at sea when the weather permitted, and the days ashore were spent on the boat, making sure that any jobs and repairs were carried out in time for the next trip. I often questioned if I had made the right decision in moving so far from home. After three years, we had our daughter, Rosha, and it was then that I started to make friends and life became more enjoyable. We went on to have a son also, Lachlan. I couldn't even begin to tell you the number of birthdays, anniversaries, weddings and other life events Damien has missed. First steps, first words, first days at school, the things that most families treasure. The boat had to go to sea to pay off the boat mortgage. That's just the way it was. Sacrifices had to be made. The boat itself, uh, like any other skipper and owner, was hugely proud of them. Um, they're all home for the best part of the year, you know. As the skipper of a boat, it's not only your family you're providing for, but also the families of your crew. In Damien's case, he has six crew, and it's up to him to ensure that he provides them with a fair wage for the job that they do. This responsibility weighs very heavy on him, as it does with all boat owners. Here we are now, and we are in our early 50s. In the 30 plus years I have known Damien, the fishing industry has changed drastically. As any owner of a fishing vessel will tell you, the authorities are making it near impossible for fishermen to keep going. I have never seen Damien so disillusioned and it breaks my heart. A career he loves, a career he feels he's been pushed out of. I do the paperwork for our business and this is the first time that I have said to him that fishing has become unsustainable. The figures don't add up anymore. The prices for fish are not covering the costs involved in maintaining the vessel and earning a decent living for his crew. The quotas on Irish boats are simply just too tight. It's a great community to be, uh, to be part of. Uh, it's something that we should not let go. Um, there's a great camaraderie among fishermen. Uh, you see us on the pier talking. No, it's different when we go fishing. <laughs> you know, we're all looking for the best spot and to do our job and whatever. But um, yeah, we, you know, we're sure we have skippers and motorboats you know, down talking to us and sharing stories. So it's actually a brilliant, brilliant community to be part of. And it's something as a country we just cannot see die out. I have told him I think it's time for him to leave this industry. To get out now while the boat has value and while he has his health. I don't want him leaving a 30 plus year career and have nothing to show for it. The rules, regulations, quotas, paperwork, penalty points and multiple hardships that are being rained down on this industry are actually unbelievable. It seems this government are intent on forcing people out of fishing. How are the towns and villages that depend on fishing going to survive? Ireland as a nation has a fantastically rich natural resource off our coast. Surely we as a nation should be reaping the benefits of this resource. Ireland as a nation have only 15% of quotas in Irish waters. Imagine, 15% overall. This to me is just a complete insult. Who has the other 85%? Other EU flag vessels have nearly six times more quota in our waters than we as a nation do. Surely this figure should be in reverse. Irish fishing quotas are being sacrificed by our decision makers in government to appease other EU countries. These quotas aren't even sold to other nations. They are simply just given away. Unbelievable. How much quota does France, Spain, Netherlands and other EU states give Ireland from their territorial waters? 
nothing. Our EU neighbours must be laughing at us. It's a free for all for everyone, but not if you are Irish. This government are not fit for purpose with regard to fishing matters and the decisions being made. Do they not realise the decline of fishing in this country will decimate rural Ireland? How are these families going to survive? How are the local businesses going to stay viable? Because every fishing port relies on fishing as a mainstay of their business. From the supermarkets, restaurants, bed and breakfast, the drapers, taxis, hardware shops, not to mention the industry related businesses, net makers, gear suppliers, boatyard, chandlery. Coastal towns like Castletown Bear, Greencastle, Dunmore East, Dingle, Killybegs, Kinsale and all the others. Their very existence depends on this industry and our heads of government still seem intent on wiping fishing out. Please sit down with fishermen, talk to them, listen to their concerns, work on their behalf, stand up for the citizens of this country. Don't let the EU dictate our future. Let the Irish citizens of this country thrive. Let them prosper and provide for their families and the survival of their rural communities.